X-Ray Ed back once again with another exciting episode of X-Ray Education. Okay, so if you're here, you're probably trying to learn a thing or two about X-Ray, uh, maybe in preparation for your upcoming examination to be an RTR, or maybe you're just here for a little uh, refresher, you know, maybe some stuff you haven't thought about for a while. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about variable technique charts, variable KVP technique charts in particular. Now, okay, variable KVP technique charts were in use, um, you know, in the early part of the 20th century. Um, this was just the way they had to do things. Now, remember, and you might be thinking, well, why'd they vary the KVP? Well, it turned out that was really the only thing they could vary at the time. Remember, and uh, yeah, let me, I'll show you a couple of pictures here. Um, what you're looking at are some x-ray tubes that were used back in the day. These are cold cathode tubes. Now, with these old kind of tubes, what you had to have was a rack of tubes in the room, and so whenever your patient came in and you gave them the once over and figured out, okay, well, how much milliamperage do I need? All right, well, I'll grab the proper tube, install it, and then I'll make my x-rays. Um, now, with the auto transformer, you can vary the KVP. The problem was with the tube, you couldn't, remember, this thing didn't have a hot filament. So there was no MA control. You couldn't just dial another MA using the control panel. If you needed to change your MA, that meant stopping what you're doing, going and getting another x-ray tube, bring it in, swap it out, and then you can get back to work. Very cumbersome. Much easier if you can just vary the technique um, you know, using your KVP. Just vary the KVP for the body part of interest. Now, okay, as you might imagine, this was less than ideal, but it was functional. They figured out how to make it work. The way you do it, this right here is a caliper measure. Um, it's English and metric. We're going to be using metric units today, centimeters, because the way we calculate a technique is we measure the thickness of the body part in centimeters, and then we're going to take that number, multiply it by two, and then we're going to add what I call a fudge factor. Um, it's, it's going to be a constant of some sort. And for extremities, um, it's either 23 or 30, depending on which textbook you're looking at. There's a lot of different textbooks that describe this. Um, Stuart Bouchon's book is as good as any. Uh, he's got a whole section in there on variable KVP techniques, and he explains the whole thing. The Carlton and Adler book, that's a good one also. Um, uh, I think the old Selman book actually had this stuff in it, and I've got one of those in my office, believe it or not. Okay, so i um, just going to show you a little bit about how to do this measurement. So as you can see, what we have here is a crystal knee phantom. Um, and this is actually human bone. Uh, we were kind of lucky. Um, some of the phantoms we have in our lab were bought years ago, and they actually have human bones in them instead of synthetic. So, oldies but goodies. Alright, so here's my knee phantom. And this thing wants to roll into an external oblique position all the time. It would have been nice. Um, if anybody's out there watching and you're in the business of making phantoms, Put some kind of a flat surface here so that this thing would stay in an upright position and, and you know, like for a true AP. That would be a big help to me. But, whatever. Alright, so I'm going to measure the thickness of this body part. And I'm going to try to measure through the thickest part of the knee anatomy of where the central ray is going to be going. Well, not necessarily the thickest part of the anatomy. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a look here. And with the help of my trusty specs, the old eyes ain't what they used to be. All right, so this particular knee is 13 and change. So let's just call that 14 centimeters. All right, so what kind of technique do I need for a 14 centimeter knee x-ray? Not a rhetorical question. We're actually going to figure this thing out. Okay, so... Ah, oh, goodness. You know, it'd be nice if somebody would erase the whiteboard once in a while. Okay, so we had 14 centimeters. 
Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by 2, and we're going to come up with 28 centimeters. Okay, and for our KVP, remember, we were going to take our centimeters times 2, and then add 30. So that's going to give us a starting technique of 58 kvp. Okay, so 58 kvp is going to be my, uh, my knee technique, um, at least that's the kilo voltage. Now, the way these technique charts work, in order to be able to figure out a proper technique for use in, holy cow, okay, I look like Phantom of the Opera, hang on a second. Alright, I probably still look like Phantom of the Opera, but at least we got rid of some of that shadow. Okay, so as I was saying, um, in order to be able to calculate one of these technique charts, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take our Phantom, we're going to take this Phantom, and we're going to put it on the table, because we're going to be using the table bucky for this. Remember, this Phantom is more than 10 centimeters in thickness, and any time we have more than 10 centimeters, what do we need? a grid of some sort. Okay, never shoot thick anatomy without a grid. Your images are going to look really, really bad. Okay, so I'm going to put this dude on the table. We're going to make some exposures at 58 kvp and we're going to run those things and we're going to see um, you know, what these images look like. What we'll do is we'll make a series of exposures at increasingly high mass. We'll start out with like, I don't know, three or four mass, something like that. And then we'll increase our mass, um, you know, we'll, we'll bump that up for each subsequent image. And then we'll look at all of our images and see which one of those looks the best. And that image will become the basis for our variable KVP technique chart. Okay, now, my students should be getting here any time now, and so when they get here, we're going to do this, we're going to take these exposures, and then I'll show you all how to uh, chart this stuff out and make your variable technique chart. All right, back in a few. Okay, y'all, so here's our setup. We've measured this knee like we talked about before. We found that it was approximately 14 centimeters, and so we are going to use, what is our, what is our, um, our KVP that we're going to be using is going to be 28 plus 30, so we're going to start out with 58 KVP, and, uh, and then we're going to see where that takes us. Make sure that the, is the table bucky activated? Yes. Okay, very good. I was just, I was seeing some more A pattern there. Okay, so this is our first exposure, and this thing was how many mass? Three. 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 Okay, so we started out 58 kvp, three mass, and so we've got a very low exposure index of only 151. Okay, so we're going to keep increasing our mass and see how that improves our image. I'll just go down the line. Okay, so some of our knees were way overexposed and some were way underexposed. This one was the best one we had, and it had a deviation index of negative 0.8. Okay, so what was the technique on this? KV... Okay, so this was 58 kvp at 6.2. Okay, okay, so this was 58 kvp and 6.2 mass. Okay, so that's going to be our jumping off point. So we're going we're gonna to make this our baseline. Is this a four and yeah. um, yep. Okay, so our mass is going to be 6.2. Okay, so that's the 6.2 6 mass is going to be for every exposure. Okay, and our KVP was going to be varying. So we had 58 KVP to start with. So if we go up by one centimeter, we're going to go up 2 KV. So 58 is going to be in the middle, and then we're going to go up, it's going to be 60, and then 62, 64, 66, etc. And then we're going to go down by the same amount. Gotcha. So you're calling that nice? Mm -hmm. Okay.
Okay, so one of my students was asking, and this is a legit question. She said, where the heck did this 30 come from? This is this constant that we're using um, for our variable technique chart. We take uh, our measurement, as you might remember, we take our measurement, we multiply by 2, and then we add this factor in. Where does that factor come from? Well, over the years, as people were trying to figure out ways to do this variable technique chart, they said, okay, well, we'll add 20. Oh, shoot, that's not good. Well, let's add 30. Oh, wait a minute, that's not good either. Let's add 35 or 40 or something else. So they kept finagling around with this constant factor here. They never could come up with anything that really worked all the way across the board. For chest x-ray, it's going to be way too low. For ankle x-ray, it's going to be way too high. So you have to have something different for each body part. Well, that's not very workable. Um, so anyway, that's why this system kind of fell by the wayside. In 1943, Fuchs came along and he said, okay, forget all this. We're going to go to an optimal KVP fixed kilovoltage technique system. And that's what most hospitals use nowadays. Um, most everybody uses. Uh, that's why this stuff is kind of antiquated. But again, it goes back to the business I was telling you guys earlier about the uh, x-ray tubes and how difficult it was to change out x-ray tubes back in the day. All right, so anyway, that's where these numbers come from, and that's why they seem so dang inconsistent. Okay. You know, we're, we're constantly having to, having to try to finagle this to make something make sense.